So in today's video, we are going to be comparing the Avalon Nano versus the Bitaxe Hex. So these are kind of slightly comparable, but we're going to be doing a video, a bunch of comparison videos, basically, where we're going to be doing little comparisons between the two. Obviously, this will be an open source, Avalon Nano being not open source. What kind of hash rates match up against what kind of hash rates? In the other video, I think you can get 5% off this using Spectre with Tiny Chip Hub. So that's for the Bitaxe Hex. I don't have a code for the Avalon Nano, so I don't think I can get you any money off of these. But in another video, we're also going to be comparing the Zyber 8 versus the Nerd QX++. So those two as a comparison as well. But currently, we're just going to be doing these two and then the other two. And then we'll be doing overclock videos for these as well. Uh, we've already done an overclock video for this, but we're just going to be comparing these two on price, hash rate, kind of functionality, and kind of what you're going to get out of them. So currently the Avalon Nano can produce up to, I think, 6 terahash, and this hex can produce up to, I think, around 4 terahash, or 4.5 overclocked pretty much overall. But we're also going to talk about the efficiency of both of them and then compare the efficiency to the price of both of them because they are slightly comparable in price as well. So which one would you rather have basically is the Hex or the Avalon Nano. And this is the Nano 3S, so not the normal one. As you can see here, it is also torn down. So there is a video of us tearing this down where we take everything apart. The reason that it's just open is because we didn't want to put the top back on it. And I don't really think it makes a difference too much whether it's on or off, in my opinion. So just looking at it, this is actually way smaller, I think, in terms of the board size. So the board goes from here down to about here on the Avalon now, so very thin. And then this one is a bit thicker in terms of the board size. So when we're placing them on top of each other, this is way bigger. I know it kind of looks comparably the same, but the cases make them look bigger. This is only going from here, but this is kind of running down the whole length of it. If you're talking about the kind of functionality of both of them, because the hex comes in this nice plexiglass, it's kind of on a stand already with the axes. They don't really come with a stand. I know you have those 3D printed ones, but I don't really like them too much. The Avalon Nano obviously encased the setup for both of them. I would say the setup for the Avalon Nano is a little bit less easy than the one with the Bitaxe Hex, just because this one is the same setup as the Bitaxe. This one requires you to be on your phone, and then if you want to access it through the internet, like on your computer, you actually have to scan a QR code. So I think the process for that is a little bit janky, but for the Hex, it's a little bit better. So. Enough looking at these, we are going to head over to the computer and show you kind of the hash rates that we're getting on both of them. And then we'll do a efficiency comparison, price comparison, and also let's just do a profitability comparison on actual Bitcoin mining as well. So let's head over to the computer now and we'll get that done. So we are back and we've let these two mining devices run. So we have the Hex here and then the Avalon Nano here. and I know that you can obviously overclock both of these, but I thought we'd do a fair comparison because, you know, the Bitaxe Hex that we have on hand can be overclocked to whatever you want. But the Avalon Nano, this is one of the main things about it, is that you get a good price for the terahash, but the overclocking ability is not there. And also the heat that is generated as well. If you're not cooling that down properly over time, I think you're going to see degeneration of the chips actually on the board. So there's a lot of caveats that come with the Avalon Nano, even though it is very cheap. But you can see here our hash rate, we've just taken the average hash rate from this and the settings currently is 575. I know we can push it a little bit further. We haven't done an overclocking video yet, but we will do one in the future. And the core voltage is 1 to 50 for the Bitaxe Hex. The efficiency is obviously listed there, but we'll get down to it in a little bit. We'll just look at the figures right now. Power around 57. Obviously, we just went over the overclocks. 
and the temperature is around 40.5 degrees with the voltage regulator at 57. The fans aren't even really running that much in terms of the RPM, so around 9,000 RPM. So around 38%, which is actually pretty good. Also, this RPM figure changes, as you can just see right there. I think it's trying to deliberate between the two fans that are actually running, so it's not showing the correct RPM on there but the fan speed is correct in terms of a percentage. And then if we move over to the Avalon Nano, you can see here we're on high mode, but we're just going to put it down to low mode just for a second, because currently the high mode uh, doesn't really run that well. As you can see, the fans are at 1,200 RPM. As I said, the one main thing about the Avalon Nano is the heat. So you get good hash rate, but the heat over time is probably not going to be good for the chips. I don't foresee these lasting for too long. Also, I don't really know what heat they're working at. It seems like it needs to be very, very high, like something around 70 degrees is probably what they're running at, just based on touching the heat sink. I would obviously would like to get a thermal camera at some point and kind of see what heat is coming off of certain places on the Avalon Nano and other miners. But that is something for the future. Also, I want to note as well, the Avalon Nano, the ping to the pool is not great. That Wi-Fi router thing, USB that you connect, is not a great connection to the actual router that you have. It's normally very high, which is like 60 up to 100. I know this says ping to the pool. But that's obviously pinging off of your router as well. So I don't think that that is very good. So I'm just pointing out some flaws before we kind of start on this, but let's actually bring it over to the spreadsheet where we have all the information listed here. So we have just at the top, miner, hash rate, watts, efficiency, price, and then the price per terahash. So kind of like an efficiency calculation, but per terahash. And then you have the Avalon Nano 3S. This is the low version. This is the medium version that you're seeing here. And then this is the high version. So we're just going to compare the low versions because they are comparable in terms of the hash rate. So we can start off with that and then we'll move up to the higher versions that we see up here. So in terms of the low versions, you have pretty much the same hash rate. So 3.2, 3.1. The watts are nearly the same. I mean, the Avalon now is pulling a little bit more watts. So the efficiency is a little bit higher. So efficiency on the Bitax Hex is actually a bit lower. And then when it comes down to price, obviously 499, which is around $500 for the hex version. I think that the super is actually $500 and the ultra might be 400. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, but that's how it goes. We could do a video where we kind of compare the Bitax hex super version to the Avalon Nano 3S. I think that would be more of a fair comparison. After looking at the results, I don't really think that it is a fair comparison. It is if the Avalon Nano only stayed at 3 terahash. But the Bitax Supra, I believe, can go a little bit higher in terms of the terahash than 3.1. I think it can go up to 4.2 and further with overclocks. And then we have the price here. So $300 for the Avalon Nano 3S, and then 400 to 500 for the Hex, depending on if you're getting the Ultra or the Supra version. And then lastly, we have the price per terahash. So currently on the low mode, you're paying $93 per terahash. And then on the hex, you're paying $158 per terahash. This is what I'm saying. It's probably better to get the super version over the ultra version if you're looking for more efficiency and a better price per terahash. And then if we look down here, it obviously decreases as well. Because you can put the Avalon Nano into high mode, which is 6.26, you lose a little bit of efficiency there, so 21.4, but the price per terahash decreases drastically. So you're looking at 47, so nearly half of what you have on the low mode. And when it comes to solo mining, I know the Avalon Nano is supposed to be a profitable miner that you regain some of the profits back in, in exchange for heating something. But because we have nothing to heat and we are solo mining, it doesn't really make sense for us to put it onto the high mode necessarily because the medium mode gets the same efficiency as the low mode. So I think even if you were to solo mine, 
and you were kind of looking out for how much you were spending, the medium mode would actually be the best one because it produces the same efficiency and you get a price per tera hash, which is $61 over here. So the difference between this and this is quite drastic, but these two, it's around, what would you say, $13, $14 on the price per tera hash. But you do sacrifice some of the efficiency. Also, the Avalon Nano, the power supply that it comes with is rated for 140 watts and it pulls 134 watts on the highest efficiency, on the highest hash rate, which is not great. So you might as well stick it on medium mode because this is going to probably thermal throttle at some point on the power supply. So just looking at the results, when we're talking about the price, obviously the Avalon Nano does outperform it, the Bitaxe Hex. You don't have the functionality of overclocking, but if you're looking for a price to terahash ratio, the Avalon Nano is obviously better. When it comes to overclocking, you can't really overclock it, but you do reduce the price per terahash drastically when you go into the medium and the high mode that you see here. That's one thing that I want to see in the future is clearly we have these solar miners that have a lot of functionality in terms of the overclocking, even with the Bitax, the Hex, the Nerd QX, all of these things have a dialed in overclock that you can dial in yourself. However, the Avalon Nano only has three modes, which I think in the future, I know Avalon is a big company and they probably don't need the profits, but it would be a smart move for them to move over and kind of reimagine the Nano 3S to give it more functionality in terms of overclocking instead of running it as a heater. They could allow people to actually put in their own overclocks, run the fan speed how they want it and stuff like that. Hopefully they do do that in the future, but currently it doesn't really look like they're doing much for these. They're mainly focusing on their bigger miners and ASICs, which are actually a lot more efficient and you get slightly more functionality on the bigger versions. So let's bring this over to a mining calculator as well. So a Bitcoin profitability calculator because the Avalon Nano is a profitable or not necessarily profitable, but is a miner that you're supposed to recoup some cost from. Let's do a comparison of that. So firstly, we have the Bitax Hex that you see here. So 3.14 terahash and 57.3 cost per kilowatt hour is 10 cents and you get a profitability of 2 cents with a revenue of 16 cents Bitcoin per day. Obviously dependent on the price of Bitcoin as well. And then you come over to the Avalon Nano 3S and you get 16 cents again, but only one cents profitability because it's slightly less efficient at that range. However, when you go over to the medium mode, which is 4.9 at 95, we can do that here. It's still the same efficiency, but the profitability becomes two cents and the revenue becomes 25 cents. So if you're talking about revenue and kind of using the heat from the Avalon Nano and recouping the cost, it could be beneficial to get the Avalon Nano. But personally, I wouldn't run it at the high overclock that we're seeing here because the efficiency just drops off at that point. It's not going to be profitable even at these efficiencies are never profitable, like up until maybe 20 cents per kilowatt hour, something around that range. So in Bitcoin mining, when it comes to profitability, mainly the big bottleneck is going to be the price of power. It doesn't really matter about the efficiency too much. It's the price of power, which then continues on to or has an effect on the efficiency. Because if people are having two cents per kilowatt hour, they can run older machines, which means they can have more hash rate. And that lies the bottleneck. With Bitmain coming out with the S23, I believe that's gonna be 9.5 joules per terahash. So even half or a little bit more than half of this efficiency. And we're gonna see those new generation chips probably come very quickly for the Bitaxes or some sort of model of Bitax open source solo mining very soon. As soon as those chips come out, I'm sure somebody will start working on a miner for that. So overall, that's my comparison of the two miners. As I said, I don't really think it's fair with the Bitaxe Hex Ultra, but for 
the Supra version, it'd probably be a better comparison. Currently, the Avalon Nano 3S is still good for the price per terahash, but you come with some caveats like you can't overclock it to whatever overclocks you want. If you wanted to make it more efficient, like the Bitax Hex, I'm sure we could make it more efficient with better overclocks. But with the Avalon Nano 3S, you're kind of stuck with three overclocks. So it's kind of up to you which one you want to get. Personally on the channel, we obviously support the open sourceness of miners. So that's why we have a Bitax Hex. And the Avalon Nano is kind of just to test it against other miners. And we have a bunch of other open source miners that we have as well. So let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Make sure you like the video and subscribe for more content like this.